Welcome. Chairwoman Young, Chairwoman Weinstein, Assemblyman Cahill, Senator Hannon, and all respected members of this committee. I am Rose Birkin, a board certified physician anesthesiologist, and also immediate past president of New York State Society of Anesthesiologists, a medical society consisting of 3,700 physician anesthesiologists with a primary mission to provide the safest and highest quality of anesthesia care to the citizens of New York State. We're here today to bring to your attention our profession's grave concerns and opposition to the proposal in Part H of the health budget, which would allow nurses to administer anesthesia without any physician supervision and would provide unrestrictive prescriptive authority to more than 1,200 mid-level providers untrained in pain medicine to prescribe narcotics at the time of the largest opiate overdose crisis we have ever seen. Our biggest concern is patient safety. Current laws and regulations mandating physician supervision require a physician to be immediately available to manage medical emergencies. Independent studies, one of those we included for, your, um, for you to read, have shown that the chances of an adverse outcome are significantly higher when anesthesia is provided by an unsupervised nurse anesthetist. Physician anesthesiologists complete a bachelor's degree, four years of medical school, and 12 to 16,000 hours of clinical medical training. Nurses are trained to work under the supervision of physician anesthesiologists and not independently. Nurses have neither the level of education nor training of physicians. The bill grants authority for nurses to perform pre-anesthesia <coughs> evaluations, anesthetic induction, and emergence. These are functions that they have not been trained for or allowed to perform without direct supervision of physicians. As for the cost savings, this proposal incorrectly claims that there is $10 million in savings to New York. Under Medicare and Medicaid, the reimbursement for anesthesia services is exactly the same, whether it's administered by a physician anesthesiologist, anesthesia care team, or a nurse anesthetist. As for access, we do not have a shortage of anesthesia providers in New York. Our association survey of New York hospitals found no hospitals in the state are performing surgeries without access to a physician anesthesiologist. The 2016 American Medical Association Workforce Study determined that out of 1,276 nurse anesthetists practicing in New York, over two-thirds, 870 of them, practice from Albany down south. This provision will not expand coverage to the western part of the state. In conclusion, I would like to say that I agree with our esteemed nurse anesthetic colleagues that anesthesiology is the practice of medicine and it should be determined by education and not by politics. We also agree with New York State Nurses Association that CRNA scope of practice language expansion should be taken out of the budget. Thank you. As Dr. Birkin stated, the legislature should reject the governor's proposal and not risk the safety and well-being of all New York citizens. I would like to add some other reasons. Let's talk about discrimination and health care disparities. I'm very disturbed that this proposal will create a two-tiered care system in my community. I work in the Bronx. Trust me. It creates a system where the quality of anesthesia care will be determined by a patient's insurance or some other socioeconomic reasons. Those with resources will be cared for by physicians, and those without will be cared for by nurses. Now, with regards to the opioid crisis, we are all aware that it's devastating our community and creating many unnecessary deaths. Now, this expansion of scope of practice will allow approximately 1,300 to 1,600 undertrained and, under, and unsupervised prescribers to write opioid pain medications and it will exacerbate this crisis. Anesthesiologists are trained in opioid sparing pain medicine techniques and are the experts in this area. Now what about patients' rights? Our anesthesia patients are at their most vulnerable while being rendered unconscious for surgery. 
They should continue to have the right to have a physician anesthesiologist who is properly trained to supervise their anesthesia care. Finally, every day I work with nurses on our anesthesia care team. I respect their work and their participation. However, the medical practice of anesthesia is not a collaborative practice. When the patient's life is on the line, seconds count. There is no time for discussion. As a physician anesthesiologist, we are trained to act decisively due to our medical education. Nurses do not receive the same level of training and are not equipped for this level of practice expansion. This proposal dangerously weakens anesthesia care in New York and may lead to a higher mortality rate. Dr. Birkin and I, on behalf of the 3,640 members of the New York State Society of Anesthesiologists, call upon the legislature to keep anesthesia safe in New York and reject the governor's proposal. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.